here on the stage we have the end product. We finally have a real baby. Not from a baby. This afternoon we're going to talk a little bit about uh, what it's like to be an intended parent or a surrogate. Um, and our panelists this afternoon are Doug Rigg and Bill Markovich and their daughter Christina. Uh, they're here from Honolulu. Their wonderful surrogate, Mary Freeman. Um, Bill Walker, who lives here in LA and writes about that and other experiences. And correct my pronunciation, it's Rachel, isn't it? It is. It's, okay, uh, Rachel Nelson, who is another surrogate. Um, why don't we go down the line really quickly and um, just tell us in brief uh, what brought you uh, to the decision to pursue surrogacy, to enter into that kind of relationship, um, uh, and why you wanted to do it, uh, Doug and Bill? Okay, so I think um, you know about seven years ago I had the itch to be a father. Bill and I have been together for about ten years, and I thought that was the next step um, for us um, as a as a in, a in our relationship. And I thought that that was really important to me since I came from a family of five and had a bunch of nieces and nephews, um, so I really wanted to pursue that. I just didn't know how to do it. Um, there were so many different avenues, and so we kind of started this whole conversation about adoption, um, actually visited with an organization in Northern California and Oakland called PACT, P-A-C-T. Um, they actually uh, place, it's domestic adoptions, uh, they place uh, Latin American and African American um, babies. Um, we kind of talked about that process and kind of marinated on that and then we decided we actually wanted a connection, a biological connection um, to, to our child. So we decided to go the IVF and surrogacy route, um, which we thought, oh great, we've got all the answers solved. And that's when we really didn't know which way to go because as you saw earlier on the panel, there's a lot of different ways that you can go about um, having a baby, you know, and you can use, uh, you know, my niece was our egg donor and Bill was our sperm donor. In the beginning, we traveled to India um, and uh, did international surrogacy in, in 2009, which was about four years after I started the conversation about having a child. So you can kind of get the time period there. And then in 2009, when we took my niece to India, hopped up on fertility drugs <laughs> um, and stayed there for 12 days while they did retrieval and um, uh, created embryos and transferred them. Uh, we came home and then a week later we found out it was a negative and then we had another transfer and it was a negative. So we had already invested that time and um, come home and thought, we well, were devastated obviously and then we thought, well, What's, the, what's another, uh, another alternative? Um, and so what we did is we just started talking about having a baby to almost everybody we knew. I mean, we've been kind of been talking about it anyway, but we really kind of broadcasted it out there everywhere. And I would, that, if that's one piece, piece of advice I'd give you is talk about it a lot because what happens is, and what happened to us, um, is we ultimately ended, ended up meeting several people that were potential surrogates and one of them ended up being Mary. Um, and it was kind of a friend of a friend who had known them for a while, had known Mary for a while, and trusted her. She had done surrogacy before um, for a, a same-sex couple. Um, she had a child of her own. The only thing is she was 5,000 miles away. <laughs> so that whole process, um, you know, just going through that process of flying back and forth, and um, you know, met in California one time, and then finally, um, when Hurricane Irene hit, I think was the weekend that it actually worked, which is a third time. So um, I think that process, you know, of going through adoption to India to, you know, gestational surrogacy, and then to traditional surrogacy, because she was, um, she is the biological mother um, of Christina. So that was all things that we kind of moved through, um, uh, not, we didn't, obviously didn't plan it that way, but it was kind of a journey of, this is kind of our master plan. And then when it got to the end, the master plan really didn't look anything like the master plan. <laughs> so really opening yourself up to a lot of different possibilities and researching um, 
and just talking to a lot of people. Um, I think now and now it's becoming more common. And I think that that is um, great because I think that those conversations are out there more and more. Um, seven years ago, they weren't as much. Um, so that was kind of our whole journey. She was born last year in May. Um, and uh, we still have a, you know, a very close relationship with Mary. We've seen her twice, well, three times when she was born, and then two times afterwards in January, and then now in LA. And we send pictures and talk and Skype, and um, you know, there will be a point where we'll introduce Christina to Mary as the person that helped us um, you know, have her. And, um, and who knows how that relationship will evolve, but we do want that connection there. And we do feel like we're a different kind of family. Um, she is not mom, but she is the person that, that helped us actually get to where we were. And to Mary's credit, and she'll probably talk about this a little bit too, is that she came to the table with so much more um, experience and knowledge because she had done this once before. She also um, called herself a science nerd, so she was very into like the whole process of actually trying to get pregnant and um, you know being two men without a uterus or anything. It was kind of a <laughs> okay, what do you know? Uh, and uh, so it was really really nice to have that um, have that uh, knowledge with us because we didn't have a caseworker. You know, we did this very you know it was it was very. Uh, it was very non-traditional. What do you think um, some of the benefits are? You know, you guys ended up setting out on your own. Mm -hmm. um, what are some of the benefits to doing it the way you did it? Um, you know, I think for one, um, with the fertility industry doing IVF, um, you know, obviously there's a, a, there's a higher, I think there's a higher cost. Um, you're getting quotes of like, Sixty to one hundred and twenty thousand um, dollars. So I think obviously cost was an issue after going to India and dropping some money there and not being successful. We decided that we wanted to go with a lower risk um, situation where we really wouldn't be paying out any money until technically somebody was pregnant um, with a pregnancy test and then the ultrasound. And so we had kind of a payment schedule set up. We had a contract and everything. And so everything was official in our eyes between us. Um, but I think it was just that um, that relationship that was developed with our surrogate, um, even when even though she was so far away, um, was was a byproduct that I never would have um, never would have thought would have happened. I thought it's a professional contract. We're going to you know part ways and uh, thank you very much and shake your hand and we get on the plane and fly home for 14 hours or whatever. But, but really that, that, that partying at the airport after nine days in the hospital, um, or nine days, two days in the hospital and seven days when she came over and she actually breastfed, um, it was, we, we developed a, a really close friendship. Um, not only just being the, the biological mother of our daughter, but she became somebody that was, um, you know, a, a big part of our lives. And so, you know, as we're standing there at the airport and she's holding Christina and I have to take Christina for her. It was a big moment. She was also very hormonal. <laughs> so that was a big part of it. But, um, and you know, we, she really, she really communicated with me and said, for the next few weeks, I need you to send me pictures and I need you to communicate with me. And I completely, we completely understood that. She was, um, you know, missing her. And that's a big part of the traditional surrogacy experience, I think, is that there is that biological connection with the carrier. And while that carries risks, I think there's lots of really So great it's something rewards. you came to value. Yeah. How did you move from the idea of a gestational surrogate and an egg donor, um, you know, uh, and, you know, your niece as the donor, um, to the idea of, you know, a lifelong connection with mm -hmm. the woman who, who bears your child. Because technically, we wouldn't have had any connection with our surrogate in right. India if she actually was um, right. carried full term. Um, I think what we did, and you know, this whole process took months and months and months of conversations with Bill and I, and I'm kind of a, you know, get up and go and like, you know, react more quickly and he is more practical and so we had these long discussions about how to do it and how to make a baby um, but not go back to India um, and I think it just became clear to us that we could do this and we actually had some close friends that had introduced us to Mary that had just had um, their daughter through the exact same process 
And so we knew it was doable. You know, all the people that were saying, oh, it's so risky, it's so risky, it's so risky, you know, in the right situation with the right surrogate and, um, you know, with, a, with an open mind. Um, and, you know, we had attorneys and we had contracts and everything. I think, you know, it's totally doable. Um, and I think that you really need to look at your surrogate and say, have they had a child before? Have they done a surrogacy before? I mean, she had done everything, like all the boxes were checked off with Mary, you know what I mean? We're like, she has a kid. She's done traditional surrogacy before. She's done it for a same-sex couple. You know, she's completely knowledgeable on, you know, trying to get pregnant. She's, you know, telling us exactly what to do on our end, not just on her end. So it was, you know, it, we, she was guiding us. And so we were really, really fortunate in that respect. And I'm not saying you need all those things, but I would look for those things in, um, in a traditional surrogate. Because it's a completely different game than gestational. And, surrogate. you know, I know that you um, kind of changed uh, because you started with what rotunda i think we started with, with in rotunda mumbai? in mumbai and then you were considering going with sci to sci so and that's um, when you found out about mary yeah so i told mary we were like okay this is the third time if it doesn't work you know we're going to have to kind of reconsider our options um, and so as we were in the process of doing the third cycle I had literally like chosen an egg donor. I haven't told Mary this. Though. <laughs> I've chosen an egg donor and, and a surrogate, and 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 we had um, had communications with Dr. Shivani in, in India, and that was a great experience. Um, uh, you know, it just everything moved really fast, uh, and basically, I, I I was prepared to actually just ship sperm to to Delhi and not go there, just go there for baby pickup. But you know what happens when you you know lay your best plans? It ends up working some other way, or the way that you actually originally had started. So um, we were really happy that that didn't have to go you know that route. We would have gone that route, but you know in the end, I think all this stuff melts behind you. You know all the money and all the traveling and all the you know pain and the frustration and the and the resentment. And you look at pregnant women and you go, how in the heck did you get pregnant? I mean, we can't even get pregnant. You know. So, I mean, we, I think we did like a dozen uh, tries with a couple of different people. There was like three different, sur four different surrogates and my niece is the egg donor and we had worked with another person before Mary in Hawaii that we had met through a mutual friend. So we had like seven cycles that we were negative in and then went to, went to Mary and the, after the third it worked. So. Well, so where I was going, we got to move on, but um, is there a cautionary tail in your two attempts in India, your other attempts here, um, that people should avoid? Um, I mean, if, if you're going to go your route, if you're going to go to India, mm -hmm. or if you're going to do independent surrogacy here, what do you not want to do? And what do you want to do? Um, I would try to, as much as possible with a traditional surrogate, try to find somebody that um, is maybe a friend of a friend that's why I'm saying broadcast it everywhere because there are people that come forward and say, I do it. One of my coworkers who is in a different department cornered me in a, at a conference two years ago and said, I'd carry your baby. And I was just like, really? <laughs> this is kind of random. But I mean, people do that. It, it's, it's surprising, but people will, will do that. And I think that just you, you need to make sure that um, one, they've done it before and, and, and two, um, that they um, you know, can have a child of their own is, is the big one. But the cautionary tale, I mean, I think if they didn't, if they haven't ever had a child, I would say I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even go that route because you just don't know. And then what do you feel like uh, the mistake was in India if there was a mistake? Um, I think that we, um, I believe, I, you know, I, I don't know, there's all these different things in my head. We asked all these questions and stuff, and we didn't get a lot of answers because, you know, it was kind of a seven, ten thousand miles away kind of thing, and the doctors were fairly responsive. But um, transfer, I think, took place at the wrong time, and I don't think the surrogate was prepped. So, I mean, that's one thing that you really don't have a lot of control of in international surrogacy. On the contrary, you know, Jason and Adrian went, and it worked just like that. And we used the clinic he was thinking about using yeah. and we had a great experience. So, you know, it's it's one of those things where if you're comfortable with being away from the whole and we were pretty far away from Mary, but if you're comfortable with that process, um, and SCI 
from what I saw and what I read on blogs and stuff, they are, are super responsive. And I mean, I'm sure there's many other clinics that are in India that are like that too. Rotunda had some issues every once in a while and we called them on it and, and we would get them on the phone pretty quickly. But you know, you really have to have the drive. To yeah. I think the issue for me was communication and I crossed Rotunda off the list. Mm -hmm. And again, India is out for the moment. Um, but uh, cross Rotunda off the list because of communication. And yeah. SCI was always very prompt in, in communicating with me. Yeah. And I think if you're going to think about uh, international surrogacy, that's one of the most important ingredients. Um, so. You gotta be comfortable just doing something that's so far away too. Well, right. 